Hello and welcome to my channel. Recently I have made this actuator, which has really cheap gearbox. The gearbox here is completely 3D printed and there is no any bearings inside. The idea of this gearbox was inspired by the work of the Genesis Robotics and by the work of the YouTube channel Gear Down For What. And so many of my viewers pointed out that yes, this gearbox is cheap. But the motor which I used in this actuator and the controller which I used in this actuator are not cheap at all. And so today I'm going to address this issue and I'm planning to make this gearbox for the stepper motor. So basically I'm going to use the same gearbox and I'm going to add the second stage with the reduction 3 to 1. So like this, instead of having the reduction ratio of 28, we're going to have the reduction ratio of 84. Yeah, 84, which is quite high. Of course, I still love this design because it uses a brushless motor, so you can control it in the torque mode. And uh, there is no possibility to control in the torque mode my uh, stepper, at least not with my driver. But at least the stepper version is going to be way, 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 way more cheaper. Because here the controller costs around $80 and for the stepper motor the controller costs $20 or you can find even cheaper than $20. And this motor is also quite expensive. It's around, uh, I think, $80 also. And uh, the stepper is around $20 max. So let's get started. Look at all these gears. Let's start the assembly of the new one. And here are all the 3D printed parts which we would need today. All the parts made out of PLA, very simple material, and all the parts was 3D printed in this orientation. This is just for your reference like this. If you would like to repeat this project, you know how to print them. Let's start the assembly with compound planetary gearbox. So this is output gear. This is the sun gear. And we need to put properly all the planets. This is more or less a random position of the planets and I'm going to align them afterwards. So now the planets have the right distance between them and now I need to looked at the orientation because this is quite important and so when this planet is a uh, radial like this this one should be perpendicular to the radial position and uh, over here and here it should be something in between not something in between but should rotate like this exactly as it here you see this one like this here like this now as you can see the orientation of the planets is the same here and here Another sun gear goes here in the middle. And I should not forget to put the embedded nuts over here. And the same on this ring gear, which afterwards will go here. On the other side of the ring gear, I installed the screws. Like this, these embedded nuts are not going to fall. Now the ring gear goes on top. This was easy. Now we can continue to assemble the planets. And 40 mm screws going to hold our planets together. The one happy piece. And now I need to repeat this procedure with other seven planets. And now the quick ad from the sponsor of today's video, Phantom Wallet. It's a compact and stylish wallet which has a special mechanism to access your cards. They have three sizes and plenty different finishes. Phantom R wallet has screw holes where you can mount various accessories like coin holder, cash holder, key holder, ID tracker, etc. Or you can even design and 3D print your own accessory. All this gives you a lot of possibilities for the customization. You can find more information following the link in the description to this video. And this is how I use my Phantom Wallet now. I basically bolted this Phantom Wallet to my iPhone case. And this is very practical. Whenever I need a phone, I need my wallet. And whenever I need my wallet, I need my phone. And it works perfectly well. Don't forget to use coupon code SCIENTIFIC for 10% off. Compound planetary part of the gearbox is assembled. As you can see, it works perfectly well. The only thing that there is a play. It's not a huge one, but you cannot call this small. So you see that this is a fixed gear. I keep it fixed and this is the output gear. 
and when I rotate the input, the output rotates with the reduction ratio of 28. And another thing which I realized that if you pinch this actuator, so if you pinch the output and the fixed gear, it becomes way more difficult to rotate the input, so the friction increases significantly. So probably in my next design I will add 3D printed slew bearing somewhere here. So in order not to miss this video, subscribe to my channel and put the like to this video. I have added a little bit of grease. It rotates uh, a little bit more freely than before. And this is how it sounds with the grease. And here without. With. Without. Next, this cowl will go here with some bearing over here with this gear. But before installing this gear, I would install this piece after this gear, the second gear, the stepper motor over here, and like this. Ta da! Now let's do this step by step. Now on this side, we need to install this cover with the four embedded nuts. I'm going to fix these nuts with the screws like this, they're not going to fall. In this brushless motor design, I have not used any additional bearing, but over here I would like to use two bearings like this one. This is 6710 bearing and I need it in order to stabilize or support the sun gear. I have installed this bearing, I have not filmed this because I used the hammer to install it, so it was quite violent. The fit between bearing and this shaft is very tight. I think it's too tight. Next, I will install this small gear on the motor. And for this, I'm going to use two colors, metal colors with a long screw. So one will go on this side and screw goes through this hole. And another one goes on another side with the screw goes through this hole. And like this, all the torque is going to be applied between the metal collar and this screw. So I think this will make this piece more solid. Now this gear goes on the motor and we need to align the groove with the screws and the motor also goes on this plate. Now there is a problem that I have not realized that in order to install it, this gear will go like this. So I'm not sure that the bearing will allow it to be installed if there is enough clearance. Yeah, but let's try. Again, this is 6710 bearing and before installing it, I need to put the screws over here. This is again very tight fit. I need to use my hammer. And now it should go like this. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I would need to reprint this piece where to left some place for the teeth. Let's try, but I don't believe that it will work. Okay, it worked. There is a backlash. Again, I will put some grease. Just a little bit of grease should be enough. And now we need to assemble everything together. I should not forget to put the spacer. You see that the bearing is not uh, all the way in in this piece. And this is because the side of this bearing is going to rest on this part. And like this, it's also going to center this piece. And now this one. And now it's assembled. It's uh, really big. It has a hollow shaft. You can pass a lot of cables here. It's a really big hollow shaft. You can easily put the slip ring here. And uh, it has a reduction ratio of the 84. Really high reduction ratio. And what is nice that the torque is uh, transmitted by a lot of gears. So there is a lot of surface of the gears engaged at the same time. So I think this gearbox should be quite solid. Cool. Now I need to connect it and see how it works. I have connected the motor to this electronics. This is basically drivers with a power supply. And at the back there is Arduino with the joysticks and with its own power supply. Let's see how it works. If it's going to work. Haha. <laughs> Ooh. It's actually quite fast. I thought that it's going to be way slower. Ho ho ho! Sound is not bad. Cool! 
This is not scientific, but I will try to stop it. Okay, no way. No way to stop it by hand. <laughs> and if I pinch two rings, no, it rotates, no problem. Yeah! This is not bad. When I fixed the ring gear with these bearings, the backlash is almost disappeared. Let me try another position. No, there's not much backlash. I really like this design. It works way better than I was expecting. I thought that it's going to be super noisy, but not at all. Overall, I'm really happy with this actuator. It works way better than I was expecting. I think there are two main disadvantages of this actuator. First of all, it's uh, very bulky. And the second, it cannot handle very high axial load, but it can handle some axial load. And there are two main advantages. First of all, I think this actuator is quite powerful because there are a lot of gears and all the torque is distributed among these gears. So the total contact surface between the gears are quite high. And another great advantage is price. This stepper motor is $12, $5 for each bearing. And also in order to drive this stepper motor, you can use the driver from the 3D printer. And like this, the total cost of this actuator is around $32. And another advantage of this actuator, so this is the hollow shaft actuator. There is a huge hole and you can pass a lot of cables there or put the slip ring. And for my next iteration, I'm going to add the plastic 3D printed slip bearing between these two rings. Like this, it's going to improve the Excel capability, Excel load capability. Yeah, and this would be perfect because if you have one actuator for the $32, seven actuators is $224. So robot arm for $224, it's really nice. Of course, it would have some backlash, but the price is good. In order not to miss my next iteration of this actuator, please subscribe to my channel. Huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. You are the best. And by the way, as usual, the cut files and the fusion files are going to be available for some of my patrons. Stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time. Cool.